After three months on the farm, it was time for me to head up to the Big Smoke to collect some things for the homestead, leaving Troy to fend for himself. Whilst I was away, he kept himself quite busy and even got a chance to tend to our garden, breaking down and laying some cardboard and wood chips as a mulch for the paths. As something we were unable to do living at sea, we are both looking forward to growing our own food and working in this space in the spring. But for now, we have been kept busy tending to all the young animals in our care. Well, this morning we're going to go and uh, we're going to go move the pigs. We're going to feed them and move them all in one pit. Deal with that first. Pretty excited. Well, I'm not sure if it was entirely that clear, but down in that um, back corner, I've just got this 10 meter bit of uh, polycord you know, with, the, with the electric wires running through it. It was attached to this little hook. So I've just got two poles five metres apart down in that bottom corner. Using that 10 metres I can make it you know, like double back and then hook onto the other part of the fence to energise it. So now I've just taken that little section out so the pigs are free to roam into there. The next thing I need to do is just re-energise this fence and then hook the other new cell um, that I've made onto that and then all of this will be energized. The pigs will make their way through. They'll see that fresh ground. I won't have to do anything else. Um, and then later on when they're distracted again, I'll just de-energize it briefly and just take down this, this other line. All of, these, um, all of these sides of these cells are separate bits of wire. So they can all be taken apart independently. After pigs. Before pigs. So we can have a look here, um, where the pigs have been is still quite rough and where the hens have been concentrated when they're not free ranging just in here, we can see the transition <laughs> where it's smoothed out a bit. So um, that's not entirely attributable to the action of these hens, there has been some heavy rain as well um, and it's sort of flattened it down a little bit, but the chooks have definitely, um, where they've roamed through afterwards, they've sort of as instead of scratching, they've equalised things a lot. So they've done a really good job. So I'm going to just uh, de-energise this fence and open it up for the girls and they can just come and go at their leisure. They have to come back here for water um, and they always just put themselves back to bed at night, so it's been pretty good. These electric mesh fences are a lot more successful once you don't have tall grass. Um, following on from pigs has been really, really good. Um, haven't had any shorting and it's very easy, uh, particularly if you keep it in as square a configuration as possible where you, can, um, where you can tension the corners. Really good and easy to use. So moving the little shelter each day is, um, is fairly important. Keeps the, keeps the chooks out of their own poo. Um, I just found this extra long hose digging around one of the sheds, which I'm very grateful for. So I just, I just swapped out the shorter hose for this long one. Usually when I, um, usually when I move this shelter because their little, their little uh, waterers are attached to it, when I pull the hose off and move it, and then just before I reconnect it, just quickly give them a little bit of a, a wash out, um, keep things nice. Just examine if they're working each day. This mesh is purely for predators. It's not, it's not really for them. Um, one day if we want to confine them, they do respect that mesh. I've heard a couple of chooks actually test it and get, get shocked. Um, 
but at the moment they're just they're just free to roam and they get quite a bit of their food from that um, this self feeder here has been very successful um, I did find that when we had mixed grains in there what would happen is the chooks would have their preference and they dig, dig through and throw a lot on the ground um, looking for their favourites. So if you do go and make one of these um, on-demand feeders that they can just stick their head with, pellets work much, much better where everything's just uniform. There's nothing to dig around and find your favourite. They just go in there and eat it. You can see there was hardly anything on the ground. There's very little waste from this little thing. It's really great. With the chook pen de-energised all through the day, that pretty much gives me um, a battery to rotate. So I could take this and pop it on the charger, or if I needed to charge up the other one, I could do, a, do the old switcheroo. Um, at the moment, both batteries are very, very strong. Um, so that's really, that's pretty good. Here I am in the car. I've been up to Perth getting a few bits and pieces. I have a trailer full of things. I have two new little kittens, um, 12 new little Australop chickens because we're really keen on breeding some Australops and having them out in the paddock with our pigs. But I was just sitting in the car there and I was thinking about how many animals we have. It's been about three months that we've been here on the property. So we have 24 chickens. We have 12 laying chickens, 12 chicks in the back here. And then we have, how many more chickens do we have? We have four more because we ate Gertrude because she was being such a bully last week. So we have four more of those. So that's 28 chickens. And then we have five pigs. So that's 33 pigs. Uh, 33 pigs. There's 33 animals. Um, and then we have our pets. We have three dogs, 36, and the two kittens. They're 738. There you go. I think that's everything. <laughs> oh my goodness, they're already dust fading. <laughs> okay, so I'm just putting some sawdust chips in here. They're actually specific, des specifically designed for little chick brooders. Um, and this is, they've got a nice, like, carbonaceous layer here to um, spend time on, and it should be really great. Um, I've already put 10 of them in, <laughs> and there's two more to go in. And the cats are very, very curious, which is uh, concerning. I'm glad we've got this zipped up brooder for them because we don't actually have anywhere to keep them outside yet. So this is their feeder. It's oops, really clever. <clears throat> so they can't scratch too much dust in there and they can just stick their little head in and they can all share. These are our little rescue kittens. They haven't got names yet, um, but they're tabby Bengal crosses and they're very curious, very cool little cats. So we're hoping that they're gonna keep the rice, mice, rat and rabbit uh, population down on the property while we're here. into the laundry. Um, they don't smell too bad, but they have a bit of a smell. It's just the kind of sawdusty material that they're on and obviously they're weighing and pooping on there. So we've moved them into here. They're nice, they're pretty warm in here. They're safe from rats, which is our main concern about putting them um, in the sheds, in those open air sheds. And we had a bit of an issue with, well, I didn't have a solution yet for watering them. So we've been putting, we are watering them with this like, little rat feeder. I bought it just to give it a go because I'd seen someone else was using it uh, with their brooder, but this wasn't working, it wasn't very effective. So then we put in um, a dish like this, which is good, like they can kind of perch on it and drink in it, but it does, they do end up poking in it and like scratching dust in it over time. So it wasn't very effective. So we needed a solution um, to stop the dust and stuff getting in there. and. 
yeah, Troy's come up with one and it splits. It looks like it's going to work really well, so I'll get him to show you what he's done. So as usual, things are a bit rough and ready, but we've um, these are all made in West Germany chicken waterers that we've got for the all the large hens. We've just got one set up here. So that should, um, I mean, they're easy and quick to clean out if they do get dusty. But it'll have the, have the benefit of a chick can't drown in this. Um, they've only got a small target area to fill with crap and they shouldn't get any poo in there. And it also trains them for their adult life to expect to find water in one of these. They, um, they're really curious, you know, this nice red colour and all these colour contrasts, it gets the chick to sort of peck at that little float that's in there. And of course, if they empty that, um, the float will fall down and open a valve that's up in here and the water will flow in. Um, but just as they peck, it just it constantly opens the valve and just fills that little cup up of water. We'll see how they take to it. So this is um, about 500 mil. Seeing as how we check on these chicks, you know, like a few times, at least a day. That's plenty. We'll see if we can just bury that in there a bit. They're really curious. Anything new? Oh, oh there we go. Yeah. So that chick just discovered there's a nice drink in there. <laughs> Mm, so they all go through in turns and they all discover that there's water in there sooner or later. It doesn't take long. I really like those waters. Yeah, they're clever. And I like that they're made in West Germany. It's a nice break from just having all Chinese stuff. We made room in our chicken coop yesterday and, and less room in the fridge. Um, we knocked off the old rooster because he wasn't doing much and um, a couple of hens out there. We, we got actually were given some hens by... Um, by a lady, they'd stopped laying and she didn't have it in her heart to knock them on the head. But, so we took care of that for her. So a couple of these black australops, um, they look like they're getting pretty close to going out into the, the big brave world. I don't think I want any adult chickens in when they go in. So we want to shift eventually. We've got the high line chickens at the moment providing us eggs. Um, but we're going to shift eventually so we're just all australops. High line chickens are the normal breed here. Um, for laying those just uniform nice brown eggs that everyone buys at the shops and we've got those at the moment They're retired and you saw us get those But these Australops is um, Australian Orpington is what Australop stands for and Their numbers declined um, a fair bit even though they're a, you know, they were made in Australia sort of thing You know, they were bred here and then exported around the world um, Yeah, their numbers had started to decline so we thought we might breed them get their get their numbers up So they're a utility bird eggs and meat and um, yeah, we might might see if there's people in the local area that might want some australops get boost their numbers back up again. Yeah, so we've got a black australop here, and these grey ones are blue australops. So these little these chickens when they oh look, he wants finger <laughs> meat eater. These chickens when they grow up, um, they get a nice iridescent sheen, and some of those large ones are actually just starting to get that sort of the light catches it and shows a little bit of green, but it's hard to show here while they're still in the laundry. I'm hoping that these ones that don't have feathers is just like they're getting their new adult feathers. They don't look that great, but okay. It looks consistent where they don't have feathers, so it looks like it's just they're just molting and getting their adult feathers. No, no, that's absolutely like. They haven't been pegged out by another bird. No, no, no. You'd know. Yeah. Not like poor Annie that was getting attacked by Gertrude. It's all in the past. Yeah. Her waters are over. The delicious past. <laughs> there we go. With Troy's marvellous contraption, it's really easy to see the water level here, so we'll be able to refill it without disturbing the chicks and things like that. Um, yeah, so that's really great. Look at that. I celebrated getting a, a new impact driver from Paskey by, um, <laughs> by making a boot puller. So it was a pretty little half hour project, but it's, it's come in really handy for pulling boots off. Fantastic. Who, who knows what else it could be used for? <laughs> <laughs> Scaring dogs. Troy processed five chickens a couple of days ago, and what he did is he um, removed the gut cavity, we kept the livers and the hearts, I've got them in the freezer waiting for when we process more chickens so we can make a meal of it, hopefully some pate with the liver. 
Um, then he also removed the thighs, um, the, leg, the legs and the thighs, so we'll keep them as Marylands for our own cooking. Um, but at the moment they're just sitting in the fridge, they've been resting for two days, so I'm going to put them into freezer bags and freeze them into portions so we have them as a meal. And the same with the wings. The wings, I'm going to brine them or soak them in buttermilk, I'm not sure yet, and then we're going to deep fry them in some of the lard we prepared last week. And then the remainder, we boiled on the stove and then um, on the fireplace overnight. So that left us with a gorgeous stock. We pulled all of the breast meat off and fed that to the dogs and the cats. And because that's quite tough and dry on a laying hen. Just show you the lovely stock that you get from laying hens. It's got a big layer of schmaltz, which is chicken fat on it. It's beautiful and yellow. So what I'm doing today is making um, chicken soup, which my mum made for us since forever time. So in here I've just reduced down four carrots, four brown onions, some garlic, some ginger and some celery. I've roasted a chicken over here and we're going to put the breast meat from that into the soup. I just put the heat back on under these vegetables and we're going to pour the stock in. Yeah, so I'm just going to let that simmer now. Probably for an hour. It should be a really nice chicken soup. And then I'll peel off the breast meat and add that to it as well. And any other meat that we don't eat for our lunch and the chicken, we'll put in that in there. This is our stash of chicken fat here. We also got some chicken fat from around the organ meat of the birds. That yielded quite a lot. We just rendered it out in the saucepan. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to top up with the rest of that fat that we got from the stock. I've had it simmering on low until all the bubbles stopped. And they've just stopped now. So that is just pure chicken fat. That's quite a lot there. Oof, just to the top. You can see the brown stuff in the pan. That's just the reduced down. That was the liquid stock that was still in there in the fat that's reduced down and just turned into brown. I guess it's like freeze dried stock. It could make it into a stock powder, I suppose. I'll probably add it to the soup actually. Mmm, tastes good. Um, we just fried up some skin, some pork skin from that lard that we were making um, a week ago or so. It was nice and crispy and delicious and we're going to use it as a coating for the chicken wings. So I'm just using my mortar and pestle. Got a little bit of a makeshift set up here down by the old house. Um, it's undercover, it's raining a lot today, um, but I wanted to do some deep frying. We've already deep fried a whole lot of pork skin, pork rind, which we were trying out to see if we could do it, and that was a big success. And now I've crushed up a whole lot of that pork skin um, and I've added salt, like herb salt, to this. And then I've got these chicken wings. I've had them soaking in buttermilk overnight with salt and pepper. So I'm going to coat them in that panko crumb and then deep fry them here in the lard that we prepared last week. So we'll see how it goes. But hopefully we've got our own fried chicken with wholesome whole food ingredients. Here he goes. Whoa. They smell great. Okay, so this was a total fail. <laughs> These are not good at all. These are super tough. They're cooked through, but the meat is so tough. So we're still very much experimenting here, um, and this experiment was a bit of a failure. Um, chicken wings from laying hens and roosters are a bit tough, and deep frying them is not succulent and juicy and tender like commercial chicken wings. So I think the rest of them we're going to I'm going to slow cook them somehow. Good gear. Good 
pig. Come and get some apples. Come on, pig. I'm very cautious. Good pig. So it's winter solstice. Um, today the sun's gone down it's 20 past 5 20 past 5 and we have moved the pigs into um, their first large paddock which is really exciting most of them are getting tucked into a big pile of apples here one of them's already started exploring the boundaries and having a look around having a graze the lure of apples is too strong Sorry, just look at this place. Look at these dogs. Look, look at Jet. <laughs> you right, Jet? Big day. Thanks for watching, liking and subscribing to our channel. We hope you enjoyed this week's video and we'll see you next time for more adventures from the Ramshackle Ranch.